Hi, I'm Rob and this is Gems of War. Consort of Darkness is the latest mythic to come into the game and in this video I'm going to be showing three of my teams I like to use for it. The first two I particularly like, the third one's still good, just requires a little tiny bit of an element of luck to get it working really smoothly. Now the spell of this troop is Dark Submission. In my case there's a 37% chance to slay an enemy. That chance will go up as your level and stats in the game increase. And if the enemy dies, create 12 skulls, otherwise eliminate 10 from all their skills. So, pretty similar to Zulgoth, just without the automatic kill. Uh, Song of Darkness is the first trait. Summon a Dark Storm at the start of the battle. Spell block, reduce damage from spells by 50%. And Darkest Hunger, steal 6 life from the first enemy when matching purple gems. Okay, so with this troop, the first main thing you notice about it is that um, the slay chance is kind of low. It's like anything below 50-50 is a little bit um, flaky on its reliability, so you want to boost that. So the first team is going to be um, a team that can boost that. It's based around the Emperor, who gives 15 in my case to all skills on the first ally, with a 7% chance for an extra turn for each blue gem on the board. As well as that, that third trait is superb, grant a random status effect to a random ally when an ally casts a spell. So we'll be um, doing that, as well as chucking Essence of Evil on dangerous troops and also charging up all the team and then casting Emperor again if we can. And if we get no blue from the beginning, we'll be casting Leprechaun because we want to use the Emperor to get this um, Consort of Darkness basically out of control and around an 80, 90 or more percent chance of the slay. You can easily get this thing above 100% and guarantee the kill every single time, effectively making him Zulgoth, just without one or two of the extra traits. Alright, the banners on this, I'm going to go for plus two Blue, plus one green, minus one yellow. We don't care about that. And the class, ordinarily, we'd, we're going to be in Corsair. But um, we do lose slightly out, out of this because um, I haven't got it on 100 yet. If you've got it on 100, you're going to be doing better than me. One of the main things of it is we get the high seas trait, which is gain two bonus blue mana when matching blue gems. What this means is, with the Emperor only requiring, requiring six blue to get charged... We just need a single blue match, and there doesn't need to be a mana surge, and we are able to cast the Emperor and boost up the Consort of Darkness. The uh, talent trees, I'd go for Snap Freeze, Insulated, Ocean Strident. I don't think these actually matter too much, these ones, because um, I, I don't think they're really relevant. Uh, backup you can have, Water Rebinding. I don't have these ones yet, but the most relevant ones of these, if you've got it up to 100, is this one here, Thieves Guild. All Rogue. All rogues gain one magic on four or five of a kind. So basically, every four match we get, you'd get an extra one magic to the Consort of Darkness. But that doesn't really matter right now because we're going to be doing this by the um, Emperor itself. And I'll show that team in a second. The second team as a looping team, which is really cool. Um, this team basically picked itself. They've got the Consort of Darkness and he has fairly high mana costs, 24. And one of the easiest ways of making that Easier is by picking a troop which gives them a 50% mana start. Now, this uh, Captain McCaw does this. All rogue allies start with 50% mana. So the Consort of Darkness will now start with 12 out of its required 24. Uh, the team kind of then picked itself from here because Night Spider is also a rogue which creates three blue gems and three purple gems boosted by rogue allies. And Poison a random melee. We don't, enemy. We don't really care about that last bit. It's the creating of gems which is the important part. So if we can make the last troop, the hero, a rogue as well, we'll have a full team of rogues and create the maximum amount of gems from this night spider. And you can go about this two ways. I've gone with Celestial Flask because I want this to be about control. We're going to create three potions of either blue, green, red, yellow or purple and gain an extra turn. So if we don't get any automatic four matches, we can mix them up and maybe get it with a extra turn as well. And it's important because um, these colours don't block the night spider. And you want to make sure this thing gets charged up nice and quickly and cast it to gain lots of purple and keep on getting a loop going which is going to keep on raising the console of darkness providing you've got the champion talents to 100. As well as that Captain McCall will be charged up and be you know if anybody's submerged you get to hit, hit them twice. If they're not submerged you'll submerge them and then you'll kill them outright on the second cast. And I'll show that team in a second as well. And the last team is the Shabanu Vespera team. This is going to have the Mirage Queen, so all elemental allies start at 50%. Shabanu is elemental, so she's going to start with a 50% mana, so 13 out of required 26. 
Now our Ballroom Crystal is going to charge up loads of uh, mana for the entire team as well as give status effects to elementals. What this will do, we'll, um, when Shabanu's cast, or ready to cast, we'll cast this on Consort of Darkness and there's basically a 1 in 4 chance of the extra boost Shabanu gives going onto Consort of Darkness's magic which will increase that um, slay rate considerably and that can actually go up really fast if you are lucky. But um, start with the first team. And let's go to a battle. We'll do the... Oh, go away. Go to the best team we can. We don't want to do a... Firebomb team. Well, it's not really a Firebomb team. That's quite interesting, actually. So, um, okay, we'll put it against that. That was my freeze thing I was showing earlier. I did do an earlier video today, mainly for beginners, showing the effects of freeze. So check that out if you've not done so already. So we'll start with the um, Consort Emperor team. On this team, we're basically looking for blue. Straight away. And if we don't get it, we can um, cast Leprechaun instead to gain blue. Oh, I've slowed the game down. I've got to speed it up again. So I slowed it down earlier because of the... Um, specifically for early players side of things. Now we can get blue. This is going to guarantee we get the Emperor charged up because of the extra blue we collect, even if we don't have a Mana Surge. Now, there's not a lot of blue there, so we can make sure we get other four matches first. So hopefully we get some more blue drop down. And this increases the chances of getting an extra turn for the Emperor at the same time, because there's a 7% chance of an extra turn for each blue gem on the board. And in the corner there, we've got seven of them. So we've got a plus 49 uh, chance. So basically 50-50 all but one. So we'll cast them. Didn't get extra turn, but we now have boosted Consort of Darkness's chance of a kill up to 52%, so just above 50-50. Right, now, whether to get this or... Yeah, we'll do that. Oh, I was lucky we've got a four match at the same time. Now, if there's a blue available, it's quite often worth collecting another one because basically you can throw it on him again and keep on boosting his slay damage possibility, but... Feeling lucky, so let's um, see if we can take up Zulgoth. And we did. Just collect four matches when they're there. That gives us a um, guaranteed blue. Now we've got lots of blue here, so the chances are this is gonna, definitely going to work. So we're going to get the boost onto the Emperor and gain um, a 91% chance of a extra turn, which has worked. And now his slay chance is 67%. So you can see how this works. It's dead straightforward. And actually works surprisingly well. I've had quite a few battles with this team. And yet to taste defeat. And you've got the added bonus of being able to chuck Essence of Evil on him as well. And again, we can again boost up the Emperor even more. Or we'll just kill him outright. We've got a 67% chance. Which worked. That team works really, really well. And it's really easy to get that above 100% as well. And this is without the Corsair being on 100. I'm, I'm losing that actual benefit of gaining one magic on, on the four matches. So I'll just do that. Um, no, not that one. I'll just do this team again. One more time because we didn't get many blue then, but it is actually really easy to get the slay rate above 100%. Corsair on uh, what his name is Corsair Consort of Darkness so we'll throw it on him even though we had a very slim chance of an extra turn now we'll cast Leprechaun which is going to charge everybody up because we can't get any normal blue matches so that has charged up a lot of the team and we've got a 126% chance of getting an extra turn with this so we'll cast this on Consort of Darkness, making him now 67%. We can collect blue again. If you want to boost him up even more, take the ones from the top, because if you take him from the bottom, you can actually get unwanted cascades. And which you don't want, because basically the more blue left behind you have, the more chance you have of an extra turn. Same as don't collect this now, you want to leave them there, because we're still on 119%. This is a guaranteed extra turn. And not only that, we're guaranteed to charge up 
um, him again. So we can cast this again. Got a 98% chance of this being an extra turn. And now we're on 97% chance to slay an enemy, which is pretty much guaranteed. So we can select that. We're going to kill them outright, put a load of skulls, and do a ton of damage. So at the same time as we're boosting that magic, remember, we're not only boosting the magic, we're boosting every stat. So the Contour of Darkness is now on 118 attack, 154 shield, 178 life. So basically, it's, um, yeah, made him pretty much... A bit of a demon, to be honest. We can do it again, just for a laugh. Why not? Could have just killed them there and then, but... Didn't want to. Want to play around with them. Make them suffer. What we're on now? 127% chance and... Um, 148 attack. 214 life. So let's um, put them out of their misery and... Collect the rest of the mana we need to... Eliminate them. Can't fail. So that's that team. That's the one that I really like. That's my favourite one out of these three teams. It's really easy to use. Um, and will be even more effective with Corsair on 100. I've only got it on um, a low level at the moment. Must work on that one. One of those uh, ones that I've just um, not really thought about too much. And now a troop like this comes along and you wish you did. So the second team is the Consort Loop Boost team. Uh, this is an all rogue team. Everyone's a rogue in this. And the way this is going to work is the Night Spider creates three blue gems and three purple gems boosted by rogue allies and then poisons a random enemy. Um, I can't be targeted by spells, which is handy. Um, the rest of the traits are nothing spectacular, but it's all going to be based around looping this Night Spider. And... This won't be as effective in, in this team as I'm going to show it as if, as if when you've got Corsair on 100 because the main benefit of this is on the um, Corsair on level 100 you actually get the... I'll have to show it on the actual class. On the Champion Talents, if you had level 100 you're going to get Thieves Guild. All rogues gain one magic on four or five of a kind. So when this uh, team starts looping with the Night Spider on four matches, basically every single time you do that, you're going to be putting up the Consort of Darkness's damage by one every single time. The other benefit to this team is as well, Captain McCaw gets charged up really quickly as well. And if one of the enemy is submerged, then they're just instantly dead from Captain McCaw. And if they're not, they get submerged and we charge them up again and kill them with Captain McCaw anyway. So it's very good. Um, with this side, we're going to be using the Abyssal Banner, plus two purple, plus one red, minus one yellow. Yeah, just show Captain McCaw quickly. Deals damage to an enemy, even if they are submerged, just to kill them. Otherwise, submerge them. So, um, really, really good. But And also, that superb 50% start for rogue allies. We can keep the loop going if we need to with the Celestial Flask. It creates potions and gains an extra turn. So if they don't match on a four, four match automatically, we can um, gain an extra turn and hopefully gain something from that. The uh, traits are exactly the same as the last team we just showed. Right, so on with this one. Like I say, I'm not going to be getting the um, plus one benefit for every four match, so you just have to imagine like what would happen. Like I would get like a four match here, and this would put up um, every plus one magic ordinarily, plus two magic already, plus three magic, because when we drop this green to here, we're going to be getting these purple from here. So you can see how this is going to work already. And again, when I cast Night Spider, we're going to create a lot of purple. We were pretty unlucky not to get a match there. So we can do it here. They're about to cast Azul Goth probably. So um, got one in slow, slim chance of beating them to the punch. Oh, it didn't work, Shane. All right, so uh, let's see. We are frozen on quite a few now, so that is a pain. Come on, take him out. No. <laughs> All right, this is a um, the diabolical demonstration of this um, team right now. Because we are frozen on our main troops. And I didn't start from the beginning doing what I should have done, so I think we're going to about to get annihilated in this one. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's a slim to zero chance in this one right now. Uh, see if I can hang in there though, but I don't think there's a lot I can really do. I think the early moves, I just took stuff to show um, the effect of something rather than doing what I literally should have done. A bandit against all these lot. Come on, bandit. Or not. Right, just kill him. Get him out of the way. Do it again. Right, let's try that again, but do it properly this time. Ooh. Normally, that does loop really, really well. It's just pretty unlucky that didn't loop then, to be honest. But um, again, we'll grab four matches as and when they're there. Like, what I done last time, I cast this straight away. But should really have cast the um, this one because you're guaranteed an extra turn if it doesn't work. And it didn't work again. The game is absolutely cursing me right now. Now we can cast this. That's a four match. Got another one there which raises ordinarily his magic by one, remember. And again. And again. And again and again. And again. So ordinarily, I think, what we've, I don't know how many four matches, five matches we've had now, but that's five, six, seven, eight. So already, that uh, percentage chance would have been going up higher and higher all the time. And like I say, like you don't need to actually uh, do this. You can actually use it as a last resort. You can cast that first. The Aurora Crystal, which creates a load of different four matches. And it's ready to go again. You can just do it again. For the very, very same effect, similar effect. And then if you want, we can cast the Night Spider, which creates a load more and creates a load more. Four matches. All these four matches, every single one is going to be adding one to um, the slay chance of this. So even though I've not been able to demonstrate it properly, because I've not got the Corsair to 100 yet, I'm sure you get the idea that um, all those four matches we've had so far and continuing to get, Look, obviously, it's not the quickest thing in the world, but um, it's another way to show how you can get the Corsair of Darkness's slay chance pretty much to a guaranteed level. Then we do Spider again, another load of four matches. This is just on purpose now, just to show how you can loop the team over and over. Now we'll do it on Celestial Flask. That done hardly anything, but we did get another four match down here. And another one up there. I'm not counting how many extra turns we've had, but it's probably about, I don't know, 15, 20? four matches so far all these we've been putting these um slay chance up and up and up and up and up and what we can do as well like for this um i'll just do it for the sake of the video we can throw um captain mccall on someone which has got them submerged we can then get captain mccall charged up again And then use him to just outright kill the person that's submerged. Bang. See you later, son. And just repeat the process. Oh, that was a little bit unlucky. As was that. Uh, they've got trick and treat ready. So, uh, looks like ordinarily this would be on 58, 60 odd percent by now chance because of all those four matches, even more. I haven't been uh, counting, but we'll see if we get more four matches like this, and we did. Like I say, I'm putting that um, slay chance wildly out of control. That's plus one magic every single time that happens. So ordinarily, that would be <coughs> that fucking treat would be a dead duck because the slay chance would be near enough, near the guaranteed level by now. So you can just keep doing this again and again and again. All right, so uh, let's um, finish these off. I'm just showing the effect there of how you can loop the team. Now we'll use Captain McCaw to get people submerged and then eventually killed. Loads of mana. Yeah, been changed into a, a weir stag. 
It's not very nice. There's slightly less chance now of getting the loop because we've got less uh, rogues in the team. But the theory's still the same. And they're submerged, so they're going to... No, they're not. I thought they are going to die, but I didn't pay attention then and didn't notice. Are they stealthy? Stealthy, you can't target them. Yeah, so yeah, all sorts of um, stuff going on with this team regarding how long it can loop for, but uh, I'll stop looping now because it's just literally showing, for sake of it, how quickly and how often you can continuously loop this team for the benefit of the console of darkness. So let's uh, concentrate on killing them now. Let's take out Leprechaun. Now, because it, that last one is the last target, they cannot avoid my detection any longer. So once McCaw is charged again, he will be able to target them. We'll submerge him first. One making him walk the plank. Or squawk the plank, as it's called. And we'll charge him up and say see you later. All right, that's that team. Now I'll show the last one. Those two are pretty fun. I like them. Good fun teams to use. The construct and getting Corsair to level 100 now, just so uh, I can use that team properly. Now this last one uses Shabanu Vespera as the main um, key to the whole thing. In fact, they're all a key in a way, which is a good good thing about I am a good team. Everyone that synergizes together or is essential to the team, like you can't do without one of the um, <coughs> allies to make it work, is the sign of a good team. Mirage Queen is here because all elemental allies start with 50% mana. And we get to convert all the green gems to Doom Skulls, which we'll be looking out for at the same time. So Mirage Queen is going to give Sharbanu Vespera a 50% uh, start in mana. And her spell is to give a certain amount of a random skill to a random skill on an ally. Then create 9 gems of their mana colour and repeat this 2 more times for random allies. So when this is charged up, we'll be casting this on Consort of Darkness. And there's basically a 1 in 4 chance of that being applied to his magic. And if his magic is um, increased then basically the slay chance is going to go up really really quickly as well and like the other team um we're different on this we want elementalist because we're going to freeze stun entangle etc the enemies when we get a a four match the this team is um, not based around creating loops so that's why we're not in corsair for this team our boreal crystal is there because it explodes a load of green gems which is going to charge us up nicely and quickly and we have a summon as well. As well as that, we can um, add a status effect to all elemental allies. And we have that awesome elemental force third trait. And the champion talents, we're going to go snap freeze, insulated, a thunder fist, watery binding, rock solid, a lightning strike, and fortitude. We'll grab any uh, four matches which come available at start. Always grab four matches um, with Elementalist class when you can because basically you get to do all those um, extra stuff to the side. They're um, semi immune to this stuff because some of their side, like Leonis um, Tower, there is invulnerable, so it's not subject to any of those effects. Same as Enraged Kurandara. But we've already got it charged up. It does work sometimes, even on a low 37% chance. I've tried it and it does actually work. But I um, just want to do this to show the effects of Shabanu. So, Shabanu's charge. We'll cast that onto the Contour of Darkness. It didn't look like it went onto magic then. Nope. But we can cast... We didn't get a loop either, actually. That's quite unfortunate. But the more different colours you have with Shabani Vespera, the more less chance you have of getting a loop going. Um, basically, you keep the colours, the amount of different colours to a minimum with her, because where it creates more gems of their mana colour, you actually get more chance of getting a loop going, because there's less chance of creating um, different colour gems. Right, so let's take a look out here. We'll cast... Crystal next. That's got charged up. Shabano again. 
Come on, put it on the magic. Right, I think that did go now. So now we're on 61% chance, which is a lot better. Um, so we can take any other four matches which become available. Always keep a lookout for this as well. Green gems to Duma Skulls with this team, because that's handy. When you get a nice four match alignment possible. But we'll cast Shrabanu again onto Corsair. And I think that did go one magic again, yes. So now we're guaranteed to, to kill the opposition when we cast this. This has basically become Azul Goth with slightly worse talents. It's now a guaranteed chance to kill and then we create 12 skulls when they die. But we are entangled, so that is a bit of a, a bummer. So we'll cast that instead, because that's going to do some chip damage still from Mirage Queen. Taking them out slowly but surely. We've got it there again now, but she's no longer charged. This is where we can now choose who we're going to take out, but I don't think this works on lethal damage. Like uh, these two. Yeah, we'll be um, spared from that. So what we'll do, we'll throw it onto them, get rid of them. And create all those skulls instead, which will do regular damage. If we weren't entangled, then the opposite team would be uh, in a bunch of trouble already. And we can cast that to charge up everybody, hopefully nice and quickly. Yeah, just do that, just for the um, take away the skull hit. There's no need to actually charge Shabanu anymore because we've already got this guy on what we wanted, which is the guaranteed slay rate. The, the game's made this slam actually slightly awkward. We can take this and get brown at the same time, so that's not too bad. Yeah, and now we're finally free from being entangled, so uh can do more damage. Got a few separate greens to skulls. Let's see what this changes on the board first. Alright, I am going to grab that first. And then there's must have a green to four to four match somewhere now, surely there's green just everywhere. Wow. It's always a good way to do it though. Now we've got the um, alignment on the on the greens, so we'll do that. Now we'll take out the last troop. Guaranteed kill and use them skulls to finish off the last opponent. So um, that's a Shibanu team. It's a little bit luck-based because you are relying on the um, boost going on Contour of Darkness's magic to actually make that viable but um still a fun team to use and it does work pretty good but i particularly love the first two teams there's a video there's my console of darkness teams if you found them useful or enjoyed the video remember to hit the like and subscribe button and most of all thanks for watching see you again next time bye for now